If you haven't found your way to a seat, go ahead and start coming in, and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and stand and get started this morning. Welcome. Blah. 
God that you're a God of not just on our good days but on our bad days and all of our days. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated for a moment. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you sit down for the first one. Ain't I nice? Ain't I a good guy? And then uh, I'm going to let you stand for the second one, for the second hymn, all right? Here we go. Amen. Roll it. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. All right, let's stand together as we sing Sunshine in My Soul Today, amen. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky, for Jesus is my light. Oh, that sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful Sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. For when my Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart. The flowers of grace appear. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sun. When the peaceful, happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now. Joys laid up above. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Amen. 
thank you. You may be seated. Got me? Yeah. Okay, we're good. There we go. It's great to be back with you. Uh, appreciate all your prayers. We had a little bit of a health issue last week. Did Jerry Nash do a good job for you? Yeah. I love Dr. Nash, and uh, I called him in the middle of the night when I was feeling bad and said, I can't make it. Can you preach? And he, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and he immediately, I've got it, and I got it covered. So thank God that uh, he was available, but just want to say thank you once again for praying for, for me and uh, they're, they're checking some stuff out. They haven't found anything really definitive yet, but uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm here. And uh, so just pray for me that uh, they'll track down what was causing me to feel bad. But uh, I want to speak for the next few minutes on uh, the second part of finding your best life here and now. Now, you know we're going to have heaven when we die, right? How many of you know for sure you're going to go to heaven when you die? Okay. If you don't know that, that's why we're here. We want to help you know that. Because the Bible says, these things have are written that you may know you have eternal life. So once we get that settled and we know where we're headed, God wants you to have a good life right here and now. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And, and we want each one of you, and I know the Lord does especially, wants each one of you to have an abundant life while you're here on the earth. We're going to have heaven. It's going to be wonderful. But in the meantime, he wants you to enjoy the ride. How many of you want to enjoy the ride? Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this part of our ride. But today, uh, let me get my little clicker turned on, boys. I've got it here somewhere. There it is. Today, we're going to be looking at building your marriage on the solid rock. Building it on the solid rock. Now, <coughs> when I say that, what does that come to mind when I say building your marriage on the rock? What does that mean to you? Who said that? Who said that? Say it loud. <coughs> building your life on Jesus is right. He's the solid rock. You know, on Christ's solid rock I stand on other ground. Other ground is what? Remember the old, the old hymn? And also, remember... You know, our theme here at Countryside, the three words, family, faith, and future, building a strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then having a stable family as a result of that, and having a secure future. And those three things, we major on that. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew seven twenty one. Matthew 7, 21, <clears throat> not, every, not everyone that saith unto me, <clears throat> Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, <clears throat> and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Now, before we move further, make sure that your faith is secure in, in the right Jesus, okay? There are a lot of Jesuses out there, but there's only one true Jesus. And there are a lot of people out there telling you to follow certain types of Gospels. You better make sure, like Second Corinthians says, chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourself to see if you're really in the faith. Because if you're, if, you, if you're attached to the wrong Jesus and you get there, he's going to say, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, notice, what, what, did, what were they doing? Many will say, Lord, have we not what? Prophesied? <laughs> have we not done this or done that? Many wonderful works. And he's going to say, I don't know who you are. Depart from me. Now, I like the next part, okay? Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon the, or upon a, upon a what? A rock. 
Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the built their house upon the what? People that don't build their house on the rock are, are what are they called? Foolish people, aren't they? The fool has said in his heart there is no God. In fact, they even have a day now for, for the fools. April 1st is April Fool's Day. That's the, that's the national day of the, the fools that don't trust God. Verse 28 came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Notice his doctrine. See, Jesus, knowing the Savior, the rock, is a doctrine. Knowing who Jesus is and what he did and why he came, it's a doctrine. And doctrinal truth is important. See, it's not just believing in some nebulous God, this hocus pocus, say a little prayer, you know, and forget about it kind of religion. Come to church and put your type, no. There's more to it than that. It's a doctrine of who Jesus is. It said, when Jesus had ended these sayings, it came to pass that people were astonished with his doctrine, for he taught as one of them having authority and not as the scribes. See, the scribes were the religious people that actually copied the scripture from scripture to scripture, and they made sure it was copied correctly. But a whole lot of times they didn't interpret it right, and they didn't even believe it. And there are people today that don't even believe the Word of God, don't even believe, really believe in Jesus, and they're in the churches across their land propagating and preaching false doctrine. So make sure you believe in the real Jesus, the rock. Now, how many of you ever got, went over to the coast after the last couple of hurricanes? You got near like Flagler or St. Augustine. Any of you get near there? I'm telling you, some of those houses over there were, were wrecked. Why do you think they were wrecked like that? Built on the sand, weren't they? They were built on the edge of the dunes, which is stupid in Florida. You know what's going to happen. There's, a, there's one brewing right now down around Naples coming up. It's supposed to go west, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be prepared in case it decides to go straight up the coast because I live near the coast over there. But, but it, people that build their houses on the sand are, what would, what would you say, foolish or wise? All right, I'm going to give you some other pictures. Wise or foolish? What's he built upon? Rock. Is he wise or foolish? He's wise, wasn't he? He's, he didn't build it down on the beach. See, that beach is covered up on high tide at that, that beach. What about this one? Foolish or wise? Foolish. Why? Sand. Too much sand. There's, now, there's some stone there. There's some pillars there. Not enough. Okay. What about this one? Wise or foolish? Well, if you like to climb. <laughs> I don't think I want to live that high. <laughs> Because getting up there would be a problem. But I promise you this, it's been there a long time and it's not going to very likely wash away. Okay, what about this one? Foolish or wise? Foolish. Why? Built on what? Sand. Wise or foolish? Wise. That's been there hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Those castles over there in that part of Europe are still there after hundreds of years. Why? Because they were wise people. They built them on solid rock. What about this guy? Foolish or wise? Huh? Foolish, can you see it? Why? Built on what? Wise or foolish? Wise. Why? It's built upon the solid rock. You see, the strongest lives are those that are built upon Jesus, the solid rock. I've lived a long time now, and I've been a counselor for many, many years. I've counseled hundreds of married couples. And I can promise you this. The ones that are, their lives that are built upon the Lord Jesus Christ survive the storms. They have storms. They have problems just like everybody else, but they have a firm foundation and they are able to withstand those storms. And you see, what you build your life upon is of utmost importance. Why do people get married? Why do they, why do they get into a marriage? Well, so many times it's because of physical attraction, isn't it? We say, oh, she's, she turns me on, she's beautiful, or I, he's, he's such a hunk, you know, and that's wonderful. But guess what? We all get older. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, you know, favor is, is, is good and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Listen, the beauty fades with time and, and we all get older and we all get wrinkled and you can't just build your life upon that kind of attraction. There has to be something more to hold your life together when the storms come. And when, when I know this, We've had a lot of storms in our life and through our marriage, but we're still married after almost 50 years, you know. And James and Debbie, we were in their wedding. How long, how many, how long have you been married, James? Debbie, tell us the years. How many? 
50 years. They don't look it, do they? They don't look old, but they, of course, he married her when she was about 12, so anyway. <laughs> I couldn't remember. But I know this, the people I know that's lives are fastened to the solid rock, they're still going. They're still t as long as they draw breath, they're able to have a stable marriage. And, and the whole theme this year is putting Jesus first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. And that's what our whole theme is. And, and this week is building your marriage on the solid rock. Building on Jesus. So, uh, see, lives built on shifting sand are ultimately going to fail. If you don't have a strong foundation and it's only built upon either you know, physical attraction or money or whatever, family connections, whatever. That's not a strong foundation. You need a strong foundation. You need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. See, the strongest marriages are those built upon Jesus, the solid rock. I know this. In my counseling time, I have seen marriages that came totally ruined, broken up, going to divorce, going to just throw it in the towel. And yet both of them knew Jesus and when we finally got their attention and they turned their lives back over to Jesus and they got their marriage centered back on Jesus, the marriage was saved. Yeah, and they're, they're still strong, you know, going to have a strong marriage today. They're, they're going fine. Listen, the strongest marriages are those built upon Jesus, a solid rock. Uh, what you build your marriage upon is the utmost importance. Don't build it on sinking sand because if you do, you're, gonna, you're probably going to fail. There, there are some that might make it in the world that don't know the Lord, but a whole lot of them, the majority of them probably won't. And they won't ever experience the, the greatness and the great love that God has for them. You know, they won't have the best. And we're talking about finding your best life here and now. Yeah, they might make it, but they could have a whole lot better marriage and they could have a whole lot deeper love if they would just turn their life over to the Lord Jesus Christ and base their marriage upon that. You see, traditional marriage was designed by God. Traditional marriage was, it's God's deal. What, we didn't invent it. It's not some social contract that, that evolved over thousands of years of trial. No, God designed it a long time ago in the Word of God. Uh, and His prototype is always the best. If you, if you want to find out what's the best life to have here, now go back and look at the prototype. How did God set it up in the beginning? We go back to Genesis 2 for a minute. And the Word of God says it this way. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Everything in that whole part of Genesis, it said God did this and God did that. And it was good and it was good and it was good. The only thing that wasn't good at creation was verse 18. It is not what? It is not good for man to be alone. And you can imagine yourself if you were Adam and you're seeing all these animals come before you and they all had mates and they were, they were nuzzling one another and, you know, and, they, and they were you know, having their life together and you're, you don't have anybody. You're looking and, wow, what's in all this for me? I got to name all the animals, but I don't have anybody that loves me like that. You know, God put a, this drawing between the opposite sex to be together. Genesis 2 and 19. So the Lord God formed from the ground of all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man, that is Adam, to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one of them. He gave name to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while the man slept, the Lord God took, God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Now why was that? Why did they feel no shame and why could they come together in a physical relationship unashamedly and live that way? Because the God of heaven made it that way, didn't it? Guys, would you say amen? Aren't you, aren't you glad God made a woman? Come on, I, you guys must not appreciate it. Are you all glad God made a woman? 
Hey, there's nothing better than a good-looking woman. Amen? And God, if, he's, if God has given you one, you better be thanking Him for her every single day of your life because Adam woke up and he goes, Whoa, man! <laughs> She'll be called woman, you know. But he was, he was like, Wow, now there's somebody just for me. And, and they, of course, see, traditional marriage is still ordained and sanctioned by God. He started it back then, it's still right today. The, the relationship, when I say traditional marriage, one man, one woman with the God of heaven interwoven for one lifetime, okay? And when we get away from that prototype, we mess up. There are people today that want to call all sorts of relationships marriage. No, marriage is between a man and a woman and the God of heaven. And God ordained that. And see, marriage was designed for our ultimate well-being. We think, well, we, man invented that. No, they didn't. God invented that. See, God knew some stuff that we didn't. You see, married couples live longer. This, these are scientific facts that we've studied, and you can, you can prove this out. Just Google it. Benefits for being married. Uh, married couples have better health. Married couples have better income. Uh, married couples have less, less ulcers. Married couples have less insomnia. Married couples are less likely to commit suicide. Uh, on and on and on. There are just so many things that God has for you in traditional marriage. You say, well, I'm not married and I don't want to be. That's okay. You don't have to be. Just serve the Lord a little harder than you do then. He, if you're single, you can have more time to serve Jesus, is what Paul said. So if you're not married, then spend all that excess energy and time serving God. And if you don't have something to do, come here. We'll put you to work, okay? We've got, we got a lot you can do. But see, God ordained marriage to make societies stronger or make strong societies. And, and when you have a strong family base then you have a strong society. Uh, marriage is important because families are important. You see, and you see what's happened in our culture. Now that the family is crumbling, we have all sorts of problems, don't we? We have all sorts of stuff. And families are important because they are the building blocks of our society. And when fam the family collapses, so does the society. And look, look what's happening in America right now. We, we have trashed marriage, basically, not this church or churches like this, and not a lot of you know, you know, people, conservative-minded people like we, that think like we do, but a whole lot of our society has trashed it. They not only have trashed marriage, they've trashed the result of what marriage produces, they've trashed babies. They don't even think it's wrong to murder babies anymore. You see, when the family collapses, so does society. Therefore, traditional marriage should be encouraged and supported by government, society, and individuals in every possible way. And, uh, you know, I constantly harp on this. And, I, and because, you know why I harp on this? Because God harps on this. You know why I keep sharing this with you? Because God said to share it with you. And people, if, if young people don't know the foundation, they don't know what to do, how are they going to find out if they can't find it in the church like this? Or if they can't find it in your home, if, you, if you're not teaching that in your home? Now, as we, as we conclude today, I want you to think much about this. Why not find your best life now by building your marriage on the rock? You say, well, I don't know, preacher. Well, you, you need to know. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here. That's why our Sunday school classes, that's why our school, that's why our church is here, is to help you find the rock. Because, you know, Jesus is the rock. In, in, a, in a society that's fallen apart, you need a firm place to put your anchor, and Jesus is that. And as we continually push and, and encourage you to be a part of our church, there's three words. What are the three words? Faith, family, and future. And what's the faith about? It's having a strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, attaching your, your anchor rope to the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that as an individual, when, that, when an individual has Jesus in their life and, and they're firmly attached to that, then they have a strong faith. And then when they get married and they, they begin building their marriage upon the rock, they have strong families that won't fall apart. And what that produces is secure futures. And, and if you are blessed enough to produce children, it's even better. Because when you produce children, you're probably going to have the blessing of getting grandchildren. Listen, I didn't know what grandchildren were for a long time, but boy, I'll tell you one thing. They are very important to me now. I have eight of them. They're awesome. You know, I would rather spend time with my grandchildren than anything else in the world. And they're, 
In fact, I love them more than I love my kids, I think. I don't know. You, you, you think, how can you love anything more than you love your children? You wait till you get grandkids and, and you'll see. But it all has to do with having a strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and having a stable family and a secure future. I married that beautiful little blonde over there back in 1971. And we both had grown up in the church and we had, our lives were attached to Jesus. And you know, we haven't had a perfect marriage, but we've had a good marriage. And we stayed married, and, and our children love the Lord, and their children love the Lord. And listen, we've had a, a stable family, and, and now we have a, a secure future because of that. No matter what happens to our nation, I mean, we're in a volatile time. We don't know what's going to happen after this next election. And there are many that are promising to, to just burn and destroy and loot like they've been doing. But I mean, I'm not real worried about that. You know why? Because my faith is firmly attached to, to the Lord of heaven through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He promises to take care of us no matter what happens. He promises to provide for our needs. He promises to take us safely home to heaven once we die. And He promises that we'll have a good life here and now. Yeah, you know, I'm not real worried. The red bellies are still going to bite on the river. <laughs> the red fish are still in the, in the Gulf of Mexico and the speckled trout and the swamp cabbage is still there. And, and Hey, what more could you ask for? My wife loves me. I love her. My children love us. We have grandchildren that love us. Hey, it's the next best thing to heaven on earth. When you attach your life and you build your life upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you build your marriage upon that rock, you're going to have a much better life than you could ever have anywhere else. Why not find your best life right here and right now? And see, all God wants from you is, is for you to acknowledge Him. Accept His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and put Him as the first place in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you're here today and, and you haven't made that, that step yet, you haven't come across, come on across. Water's fine. Water's good. And you'll, you'll enjoy walking with the Lord. If you haven't done that, you need to do it before it's too late. Because I really believe that uh, time is running short in history. I believe that the, the, the gospel call is still going out and, and you know, he said, whosoever will can come. And Jesus and the, the, the Spirit and the Father and the, and the Son say, come, drink the water of life freely. You know? So the door's wide open right now. But one day it's going to shut just that quick. Sorry, Brother Phil. Check his heart quick. No. <laughs> it's going to shut one day soon. And, and it's going to all be over. And the invitation is going to be withdrawn. Right now it's a red carpet. When it closes, people can cry and pray and sing and prophesy, do whatever they want to do like a holy roller preacher. And guess what? They will not be able to get in. Right now it's free. And, and the train's loading up, so you better get on board. And, and not only your personal life, get that right, but also put your faith in the Lord Jesus and let that be the foundation of your marriage. You'll be glad you did. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you for Matthew 7, Lord, and the beautiful, wonderful story of the, the man that built his house upon the rock, Lord. And I pray that each one of us here will be like that. We won't be like the fool that built his house upon the sand. And Lord, we won't be like those that just know you in word only. But Lord, we will follow through with our lives as we Believe in you, but we also follow you all the days of our life. And we begin to put, apply the principles and start obeying your commands, Lord. I pray you'll help us do that. Help us to have the best life we possibly could right here and right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today and you want to talk more about it and you'd like to stay behind for a few minutes, I'm, I'm available. That's what I do. That's what we do is to help you find that Lord Jesus Christ. So God bless you. Have a good day.